Hello everyone and welcome to your lesson of physics. So uh, this video is basically the extension of my previous video about the same topic work power and energy. And in this one I have like selected some other questions which I'll be solving in front of you. So let's get straight into it. Let's start with the question number one. Figure 3.1 shows part of a small hydroelectric system that generates electricity from moving water. Okay. Every minute. Okay, so let's try to write down all the data. Try to keep highlighting the data that we get in the question. So this is the first thing. Every minute, so it might be used in the question which is the time. So time is given as one minute, or you can write it as 60 seconds. Seconds being the standard unit for time in physics. So water with kinetic energy, 14,000 joules emerges from the pipe. The water turns a turbine that is connected to the generator half of the kinetic energy of the water is given to the generator all right now this statement is important okay and uh, whenever you're solving this question so you might be committing a mistake over here so it says whatever the end whatever amount of energy is given which is 14,000 joules in this case only half of that energy is given to the generator. Calculate the power input to the generator. All right, first thing first, that you need to write down the formula of power, which is power equals energy over time. So I'll be writing down the formula first. Power equals energy over time or work done over time. You can write any one of these two. Basically, uh, in terms of dimension, energy and work is the same thing. Okay, it's not a different thing. Both are measured in joules. So basically, if you uh, do some work done on an object, then that amount of work done would be stored in the form of energy. All right, so it's like uh, you can use it interchangeably. Now, let us insert the values of energy and of time from the data. Now, in the data, we were given with 14,000 joules. But then, in the very next sentence, it was given half of the kinetic energy of water is given to the generator, only half of it. So, we'll be using only 7,000 joules, All right? Because half of 14,000 would be 7,000. Only half of the energy is given to the generator divided by time, which is like, once again, you can't write one minute because in that case, if you measure time in minutes, your answer would not be in watts, which is the standard unit of power. So you have to write time in the standard unit, which is seconds. Now you just hit it on the calculator, 7,000 divided by six. You can just cancel out one zero. And try to use the calculator because in physics papers, you're provided with the calculator and you should not be taking any risk of mental calculation. So it would be 116.67. And since the information was given in two SF, two significant figures, so I'll be converting the answer into two significant figures, which is 117 watts. Watts is the standard unit of power. All right, then we have the second part, suggest a reason why only some of the kinetic energy of water is given to the generator. All right, so basically, if this was your, that was your turbine, and 
the water was hitting the turbine. So they're saying if let's say water was having 100 joules of kinetic energy. Now the turbine, it was not having the same amount of kinetic energy. Only some of the kinetic energy of water, maybe 20 joules, 30 joules. So we have to mention a reason for that. Now there's a generic answer for any question like that, but let's like, uh, write first, let us write an answer which is more specific, which is more like closely related to this one. So that is, as the water hits the turbine, As the water hits the turbine, it is still moving. All right, now all of the water would not be stopped as it hits the turbine, and if it's still moving, it means it still has some of the kinetic energy. So if the water was having 100 joules of kinetic energy, not all of that 100 joules is given to the generator. Because if all of the energy were given to the generator, then how come the water have the energy to move again? So all the kinetic energy of the water is not transferred to the generator. All right, now the generic answer is obviously if you're not able to come up with that kind of phrase or that kind of conclusion, then you can always like use one generic statement, which is um, some of the energy is lost in the form of heat and sound, right? That is generally an answer which is accepted for any question which involves the energy loss, all right, 90% of the time. Let's move on to the next one, part B. State what is meant by renewable energy, okay? So basically, renewable energy is the energy that you can use for a lot of time for a long interval of time and you will never run out of it. Uh, if we consider the solar energy, for instance, the solar energy, it is estimated that the sun was there for about 5 billion years and it has pretty much the same amount of time before it collapses into its own gravitational field and dies out. So we have around 5 billion years. So that's plenty of a time. Not too much time in cosmic scale, but too much time in terms of our, our bio, biological scale. So we define renewable energy as the energy Or you can also write the energy that can be replenished, which means the same thing. All 
All right, many a times we are, the students are tempted to write the energy that can be recycled. Uh, this is the phrase, this is the statement that is rejected by Cambridge. And if you open up the marking scheme, the straightforward mention, if any students write this statement, the energy that can be recycled, reused, you have to ignore it. No mark would be given for that. So that's why we have to be more specific. We have to use the terms which are suggested by the Cambridge itself. And the easy way of like uh, taking a look at that is to go through the syllabus, right? You go through the syllabus outlines, the key terms, the key definitions as per their requirement, they are written over there. All right, the next one we have state one source of rene non renewable energy. All right, the most popular one is fossil fuel. All right, and that can include coal, natural gas, oil, ADC. You can write any one of these. You can write uh, as a collective one or coal, oil, crude oil, natural gas, or any one of these. All right, let's move on to the next question, number dash two. Figure 2.1 illustrates the journey of a cyclist from point A to point B. Point A and point B are at the same height, okay? The cyclist starts from rest at A and paddles up the hill up and over a hill. Near the bottom, the bottom of the hill, she starts to break and comes to rest at B. Part A says, describe the energy changes that take place as she paddles up the hill at constant speed. Now, the most important uh, phrase in all of that question is this thing, at constant speed. All right. So this is the thing that you really need to consider. First of all, you need to tell about the energy change. So you have to start from the energy that existed previously, all right, before she started to move. Now, in order to, uh, in order for her to move, where did the energy come from? Which form of energy was being converted into what form of energy? This is basically the question. All right, so basically, uh, the energy stored in the body that would be responsible for doing any kind of work, whether it is piling up and over the hill or, or anything. So basically, we're starting with the chemical energy. And the most important phrase, like I said, is at constant speed. Now, this is the rule of thumb. Whenever you get a question that involves the energy change and it says something like constant speed, constant velocity that means you don't have to write in terms of kinetic energy because the change in kinetic energy would be zero there would be no change in kinetic energy because the kinetic energy basically depends on according to the formula kinetic energy depends on mv square over 2 or 1 over 2 mv squared so it depends on mass and speed all right velocity is basically speed in specific direction so if during the journey the mass does not change because we have the same person who is cycling the speed is not changed how do we know that it's written over here at constant speed speed does not change so that would mean the kinetic energy will not change so never mention about kinetic energy whenever you have energy change problem and they say about constant speed. So basically what would happen is the chemical energy of the cyclist is being converted into gravitational potential energy
and heat. All right, and the conversion would be taking place at the same time. It's not like that first the gravi uh, uh, first the chemical energy is being converted into gravitational potential energy, and then that gravitational potential energy is converted into heat. No, chemical energy is being converted into gravitational potential energy, and at the same time, a fraction of that energy, chemical energy, is also being converted into heat. So if I write it down in like block form, or it would be written like this, chemical energy is being converted into GPE plus heat. All right. If you write this symbol over here, that would be invalid because it would imply that chemical energy is being converted into GPE and then GPE is being converted into heat. No, chemical is being converted into GPE plus heat at the same time. All right, let's move on to the next one. Explain how the law of conservation of energy applies to complete the journey from A to B. All right, from A to B, basically, the energy law of con conservation of energy uh, I, I hope everyone remembers that which is the energy of a system is conserved conserved means it does not change it remains the same so in this one like many times the students will write the statement of the law of conservation of energy the answer is pretty close to the statement but you can't exactly write the statement you have to explain how does that law applies in this specific case all right so you can't just write the statement of the law of conservation of energy and get away with that no you have to explain how does that law apply in the journey from a to b so it is for one mark so you can write this statement at any point during the journey from A to B, during the journey from A to B, the total energy of the cyclist remains constant. Total energy of the cyclist remains constant or remains conserved. All right, so this is how we uh, apply the law of conservation of energy in that journey all right then we have the next one and it is very recurring question this kind of question is very popular so it is some uh the basic theme of that question is that you have to apply the formula of gpe the gravitational potential energy which is m g h all right m stand for mass g stand for gravitational acceleration as stand for uh, height from a certain reference from ground generally from ground all right so the popular variation in that is they give you the value of gpe that is given and they ask you to find the value of h find the value of height so basically it's like a question of mathematics you have to like just switch around the data make h the subject and find the value of h so basically we'll be writing here gravitational potential energy that equals m g and let's write h with red because we need to find this one this is the unknown and let's insert all the values that we have so we have the value of 
GPE which is 5400 joules the mass is also given 60 kilograms gravitational field strength they have given themselves and if it is not given then you have to use it 9.8 according to the new slavers you have to use it as 9.8 but here we use it as 10 because it's given already times h all right now just you just need to separate h on one side and everything else on the other side i mean i can straight away cut these two zeros these two zeros and that would be nine in the unit of meters right 54 over 6 all right or you can just do it the calculation the simplification you can do it the way you're comfortable right you may not be cutting the zeros on each side you can just multiply 60 and 10 and then shift it on the other side and just hit it on the calculator All right, then we have the question number three. Uh, figure 3.1 shows a man using a chest expander to increase the strength of his arms. The chest expander may be considered to be a single spring, then force and extension are given with respect to each other. The part A says the mass increases the for uh, the man increases the force on the spring from eight from zero to 180 Newton. The spring extends by 30 centimeter and the average force exerted during this process is 90 newton calculate the work done on the spring first of all whatever you need to find write down the formula of it okay work done equals to force into distance all right so basically the distance this is something not used in the question this mathematical question but you should be aware of it that in for work done we use the distance that is parallel to the force all right some of the books say or some in some of notes you'll find the distance in the direction of force i personally don't use like that term because sometimes a student would say okay sir if the force is forward and the distance that is being covered is backward then that specific definition is kind of inconsistent in that case because we said the distance covered in the direction of force so technically if force is forward distance is backward or displacement is backward then it's not exactly in the direction of force so that's why i personally like to say force product of force and displacement parallel to the force so for parallel you can have you just uh, have to have two things or two directions in such a way that they don't intersect each other at any state all right but that was just an extra thing it had nothing to do with the question let us insert the values now basically there are three different values of forces given zero newton 180 newton and 90 newton now that might be a little bit confusing but you have to use the third one because that is the average force right the average force average of 0 and 180 even the if the average force were not given if they had not given the 90 newton we would still use 90 newton because if you're using let's say the starting for 0 newton then why are you not using 180 newton or if you're using the 80 newton which is the final force and this was a starting force if you're using 180 newton then what about the starting force all right so even if they have they have given like one force is given as 10 newton the other is given as 20 newton the other third one is given as 30 newton out of those forces those three forces which force do you have to use you have to use the average one okay the central one 
But in this question, they have explicitly mentioned that the average force is 90, 90 newton. Okay, so they have done like uh, a favor to us. So we can use that 90 newton straight away. 90 times distance 30 centimeter. Uh, one of the mistakes that you might be committing would be not converting centimeter into meters. So it has to be converted into meters. So it would be not 0 0.30 meters not point three zero meters and that would be twenty seven joules all right twenty seven joules is the answer for this one All right, in the next part, 20 extensions are made in one minute. Again, you have to write one minute as in the standard unit of time, which is second, so it would be 60 second. Calculate the power used to extend the spring. All right, first of all, let us write the formula of power. Well, the formula of power is uh, work done over time or energy over time. All right, so we have written the formula of power. Now, how much work is being done? That's the question, okay? How much work is being done in that case? So for each extension, for a single extension, it has to do work done of 27 joules. All right, so he needs to do 27 joules or for one extension, right? When he is extending, extending it for the first time, he is doing a work of 27 joules. For two extensions, he would need to do a work of two times 27 joules. For three extensions, he would need to do a work of three times 27 joules. And for 20 extensions, he would need to do a work of 20 times 27 joules. So the total work done would be 20 times 27 and in how much time? 60 seconds. And let's calculate that. You can raising off the extra stuff from here. So basically it would be zero canceled out. 3 and then 3 nines are 27 so it would be 9 with the unit joules per second or aka watts all right capital w watts all right let's move on to the next part which is the mcq part we have to use choose the most suitable answer and the first one is The girl shows a uh, the diagram shows a girl lifting a box with weight 50 newton from a low shelf to a high shelf. Okay, how much work is done on the box? First of all, straight away write down the formula for work. W equals F into D. All right. Now, how much force is being applied? The same as the of the weight of the object which is 50 Newton, okay, is given in the question that the weight of the box is 50 Newton. So that would be the force that we would need to apply in order to lift it times the distance, all right? So if you have to lift the block from the lower shell from this point to the higher shell till this point, how much displacement or distance is covered between these two points? All right, so this one was your starting point and this one was your ending point. How much distance is there between these two points? All right, if you see that, the total is 1.8 and this one is not 0.6. So in order to find this distance, you have to subtract from 1.8, 0.6. 
so that would give you the distance of that portion 0.8 minus 0.6 would be 1.2 right 1.2 meters so i can just write straight away 0.2 so 50 times 1.2 Now it's 60, all right? So 60 joules is a work done, all right? The mistake, the frequent mistake would be some of you would be writing 50 times 1.8. One of you would be writing 60 times not 0.6. Uh, but some of you would also be writing 50 times 1.2, which is the right answer. Let's move on to the next one. The diagram shows a part path of a driver after leaving a platform and before entering the water in the swimming pool. Okay, uh, the gravitational potential energy of the diver is zero when he is at the surface of water. So at this point, the gravitational potential energy is zero at this point. Which statement about the diver's energy along the path is correct? Okay, so at the point X, he has only gravitational potential energy. They're saying at this point, he has only gravitational potential energy. So can he be having only gravitational potential energy at this point? Uh, the answer is no, because he's uh, falling down, is getting into the surface of water, is in the air and he's moving and if something is moving it does have kinetic energy as well so only gpe no that's out the window so you can straight away discard the option a at the point x he has only kinetic energy all right so does he does he has only kinetic energy at this point no, because he does have some potential, gravitational potential energy as well. Because gravitational potential energy reduces to zero at the surface of the water. So above the surface, there would be some gravitational potential energy as well. So only kinetic energy? No. The gravitational potential energy is always more than the then his kinetic energy no it's not the case for the journey uh for some state it might be the case but what about the point let's call z over here at this point the gravitational potential energy would be minimum uh, kind of minimum not exactly minimum but gravitational potential energy would be small because the height is like really small at that point height from the surface of the water is quite uh, small in that case but kinetic energy would be uh, quite large because the speed at that point would be quite high so gravitational potential energy is always greater than kinetic energy no that's not the right statement and by the process of elimination there's only one option left which is d and let's see if that makes sense as well. It says the sum of his kinet, uh, gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy is constant, which is consistent with the law of conservation of energy. All right, let's move on to the new one, to the next one. Uh, we have, which source releases carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas when electri generating electricity? Uh, geothermal, no, it is not. Hydroelectric, no, it is not. It has nothing to do with the car carbon dioxide. Nuclear, no, it, the only problem with the nuclear is uh, basically, it radiates the nuclear radiations or the nuclear waste is there. But the problem of carbon dioxide emerges from the fossil fuels. Basically, if you burn the fossil fuel, if you burn the coal, uh, natural oil, gas, 
natural gas carbon dioxide is released in that case so uh, a is the right answer for this one All right, let's move on to the next one. A student used a Newton meter to pull an object horizontally along a rough road. Okay, so that statement is kind of, uh, physical interpretation would be kind of like this. This is a box and he's using the like Newton meter, which would measure the weight of the object. And here it would be measuring the force because you you're stretching it and it would marry the force in newtons the student multiplies the newton meter reading which is newton and that is quantity that is married in newtons is force so basically uh, the newton meter is giving us the value of force and then we have he multiplies the newton meter reading by the distance moved by the object all right so he is multiplying the force f by the distance d and if you multiply the force and the distance what do you get we get the work done power no power has to take account of the time as well all right kinetic energy has to take account of the speed as well efficiency of the process now efficiency for efficiency you need to have the energy of the system how much energy you're supplying and how much energy you're getting back or how much power you're supplying and how much power you're getting back so that thing should be there for efficiency speed has to be there for kinetic energy time has to be there for uh, power so d is the right answer a constant force f pulls a block of weight w up the slope shown all right how much work is done in pulling the block up the slope all right so in pulling the block up the slope you have to use the force and the displacement which is vertically upward okay force and distance all right because you need to find the work done the formula for work done is force times distance or displacement in the direction of force so for pulling it up the slope you have to use the weight of it okay so the force in that context Oh, sorry. It's saying uh, pulling it up the slope. All right, all right. So previously, your block <coughs> might be at that position. All right. Previously, the block might be at this position, and then the block would be at this position. So in order to move from here till that point what force is bringing the block from this starting point to this end point it is a force f right that is bringing the block from the starting point to that end point so the force would be f and how much distance is being covered in that direction it is l the distance l so the answer would be f times l all right so that's it for today uh that should be the end of it end of the video see you in my next video lesson allah hafiz